Hey, it's A Humble Collector here. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at a Prussian Model 1889 Infantry Officer Sword. Uh, this is probably one of the coolest things that I own um, for a lot of reasons. And not only that, I actually have a very personal tie to this weapon as we're gonna talk about in a minute here. Uh, so first things first, I was not able to find a maker's mark on this sword. However, it has this black scabbard here, uh, which puts it at 1906 manufacture or later, so just prior to World War I. And the scabbard itself is pretty rough. But the handle is actually in remarkably good condition. We have a nice royal cipher here, uh, Kaiser Wilhelm II's mark on the handguard. And then if I pull this out, we can see this lovely Damascus blade with this gold inlay work and etched design, just absolutely beautiful. And then if I flip it here, we can see that it's actually engraved, if I can focus, Feldwebel Mobus of the 8th Company of Infantry Regiment No. 53. Now, Infantry Regiment No. 53 was originally the 5th Westphalian Infantry Regiment, and it would become famous during the First World War as one of two units to earn the moniker of Vostormer at the Battle of Verdun. So the 53rd and the 158th Infantry Regiment uh, would actually capture the fort during the Battle of Fort Verdun, and that was kind of an honorific that was given to them as a result of that action. So a little bit about Fort Vaux, and I'm going to put some pictures up on screen here that are actually from the 53rd's uh, War Diary. So Fort Vaux was part of the Ring of Defenses around Verdun, and really when the Battle of Verdun started, Fort Vaux wasn't in great shape. Most of its artillery and ammunition had been taken and moved elsewhere on the front by that point, so it was pretty undergunned, not particularly well staffed when the Battle of Verdun started. The fort we bombarded throughout the battle, and eventually on June 2nd, after Months of being under siege and repelling multiple German attacks, the 53rd and the 158th would rush into the fort. They would actually capture the exterior of the fort as well as the upper parts of the interior, forcing uh, the garrison under the command of Major Sylvain Eugene Reynal. Uh, they would actually be forced into the lower levels of the fort, and they would actually hold out there for several more days. Major Sylvain uh, famously would actually order a bombardment of the fort on June 5th. Uh, because at that point, the Germans pretty much taken over the entire outside, and he would eventually surrender the garrison on June 7th. Now, Fort Vaux would not remain in German hands for long. It would eventually be abandoned, and the French would recapture it without a fight in November. Now, obviously, being tied to Fort Vaux was probably one of the most famous parts of Verdun, especially for my generation. It was actually a map in Battlefield 1. have many memories of fighting inside that fort uh, from that game. Now, I really want to be able to tie this sword to Verdun. Uh, but I can't. <laughs> so the uh, Feldwebel Mobus, who is inscribed here, um, unfortunately, I can find no record of him. So I, he could have very well retired prior to the First World War starting and not come back. Um, he could have been killed prior to Verdun. Um, I really don't know. Unfortunately, even though there is a really good unit history for the 53rd, um, it doesn't actually list very many people below the rank of like Leutnant. And I've noticed it's kind of a difference between the German and the American war diaries is that American war diaries tend to really focus on trying to put in, you know, a lot of the efforts of privates and corporals and things. And a lot of the German war diaries just don't do that. They only really mention the officers. Um, so unfortunately, I was able to find nothing on him. So I cannot confirm nor deny that he was actually at the uh, assault on Fort Vaux. It is worth noting that the 8th Company was not specifically called out in the section of their war diary dealing with the attack. Um, so yeah, really not too sure there. If anybody has uh, like a book on Verdun that mentions him or on the 53rd that maybe I'm missing, I'd love to hear it. Please let me know. Um, but yeah, beyond that, it's just a really beautiful example of an engraved uh, dress sword. The Damascus blade here does have some nicks. Um, obviously, this would not be used in combat. This is probably from, you know, somebody's kids banging this on something or just wear over time. Uh, but yeah, like I said earlier, this sword actually has a very personal connection for me. So a very good friend of mine uh, lived with me for about a year and a half. And at one point while he was living here, we actually went to an antique store about 30 minutes down the road. You know, very small, like one lane country road. It's in an old barn. And I was surprised when we went in there that they had a World War I German Sabre. And so I kind of looked at it and the price was more than I had on me. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. I took a picture of the inscription. And then I got home and I started doing research. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the 53rd Infantry Regiment. They stormed Fort Vaux. That sword is actually kind of historically significant beyond just being cool. Um, so as a result of that, I spent the next couple months like thinking about it. And I was like, do I really want to spend that much money on a sword? 
And I, I went back and forth. And eventually, after months of this, I'm like, all right, I'm going to bite the bullet, pulled the money out of my account, went to the store, and it was gone. And I thought that was the end of it. Well, uh, several months after that, uh, as my friend was getting ready to move out and he was getting ready to get married, actually, um, he came downstairs. He's like, hey, you know, I just have something to talk to you about real quick. Can you close your eyes? And I was a bit confused. I'm like, all right. So I close my eyes. And he starts talking about, you know, asking me to be his best man and everything, which uh, was really cool. Uh, you know, he's been a friend of mine for a long time now, over half my life. And I, I consider him my closest friend. Um, so to uh, be asked to be his best man was really, um, really flattering. I really appreciated it. Uh, but then he mentioned that, you know, being his best man would mean that I have to be his second if any duels of honor should come up and that a second needed a sword. And into my hands, as my eyes were closed, was placed uh, Felbubble Mobus's sword, which he had gone back to the antique store and bought months earlier and just hidden in my house. And I had no idea it was here. Um, and I was shocked. I have not knocked speechless very often, as you could probably imagine, but I was speechless. So not only is this sword a really interesting piece of history tied to one of the most famous battles of the First World War, but it was given to me by a very dear friend, and his fiance said that I'm allowed to wear the sword uh, at the reception. So I will probably be one of very few people uh, who have ever had the chance to wear a Model 1889 sword at a wedding in the 21st century, so I'll take that. Uh, but yeah, overall, I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, this is just a really cool piece with a lot of interesting history behind it. And if you have any other information on the 53rd or on Feldbubble Mobus, I would love to hear it. Uh, but yeah, overall, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment down below. Love hearing from you. Uh, thank you all for watching. Happy collecting. And I will see you all again very soon.